In this video, we're going to talk about a really, really big change that Atlassian is making to the undercarriage of Jira. And if you're a safe organization or a team that practices safe, then you're really, really going to be excited about this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And most importantly, don't forget to check out the links down in the description down below, as you will find links to my merch store, to my paid courses, and of course, to the sponsors that make these videos possible. So, so go show them some love and click on those links. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. So let's talk about a very, very significant change that Atlassian is going to be doing here very, very soon, fingers crossed. Now, about a year ago, in fact, probably more closer to a year and a half ago, Atlassian put on their roadmap that they were going to allow you to rename the Epic. That's right. If you've ever wanted to rename your Epic, then it's finally almost going to be possible. Now, I'm going to show you an article that was published just a couple of days ago that is going to walk you through the details of what is coming. But first, I want to set the stage. I want to walk you through what this is going to do, why you would want to do it, and of course, some considerations that you should be considering because this decision should not be taken lightly, especially when you're excited, right? You're going to let your emotions get the best of you. And trust me, while I love this feature, I think it's going to be an amazing feature. It's not going to be for everybody, at least not just yet. Are you tired of manual backups when it comes to Jira Cloud? If you've ever tried to backup Jira Cloud, then you know that it's not the most intuitive thing in the world. Well, let me introduce you to Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud. This app is made by my good friends over at Rewind, and it basically automates your backups in Jira Cloud. Now, it takes a few minutes to set up, and after that, you can enjoy manual or automated backups, and your data will never be lost ever again. Use the link in the description below to start a free trial. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on. So why do you care? Why is this important, right? Why is renaming your epic than the actual name, right? So we're not talking about renaming your epics, like an actual epic. We're talking about like not calling an epic, the issue type epic, an epic. Right? Maybe, just maybe you want to call it a feature, right? Especially for your teams that are safe, you know that we have the epic then the feature, then the user story. And if you've been using Jira, you know that that feature is a big X. It does not exist. It doesn't work, right? You have to, by Jira's rules, have an epic and then your user story. There's no way to sandwich in a feature in there until now, until this ability to have flexible naming and epics that is almost here. So Atlassian is opening up early access to this new thing that they're going to be calling a parent field. And what's it going to enable? Well, having this parent field is going to allow you to have flexible naming of your epics. Now, we may be thinking, well, what's the deal, right? Well, today, the way it works is if you have a subtask, the subtask has a parent, and that parent is typically a story, a task, or a bug, but it's a parent-child relationship. Now, if you have a story and you want to relate that story to an epic, you don't use the parent-child relationship. You use instead the epic name and epic link fields. And those two fields, the epic name at the epic and the epic link at the story, those two fields are the same, the values at least, and then they connect for you. And now you have an established epic that's the parent and a story that's the child. But notice you're using those two fields. And then if you are a Jira Premium subscriber, and you want to connect that epic to like an initiative up above, well, you don't use the epic name and all those things because those are down there. You now use what's called the parent link. And that parent link is going to allow you to connect that epic to something greater like an initiative up above. So that's how it works today. But at last, you're simplifying this. So as you can see here, they're just going to introduce something's called the parent field. And as you've seen from this picture, you're just going to have a field that's called parent. And what this is going to allow you to do is literally up and down the entire chain of hierarchy, however you want to define this, you're just going to have a parent, child, parent, child, parent, child. And you can do this for initiatives to epics, to features, to stories, to subtasks, or you can go even higher and come back down, right? But you're going to be able to move things around. And most importantly, you're going to be able to rename that epic so that it can be your feature. So then you can create another issue type of the type epic that'll be the parent of that feature. And then you can create your initiative above the epic. So now you have like a six tier hierarchy. 
but it's all going to be simplified because you're just going to have a simple parent and child relationship, which is going to let this all work so much better. So let's keep talking about the details here of what this beta entails. So as I've been mentioning, right, this is going to be a safe, compatible uh, changing, and it's going to allow you to rename the epic level so that you see it reflected because you can actually, if you wanted to today, rename your epic, but you have a problem because the moment you rename your epic and you call it, let's say a feature, well, you still have the epic link and you still have the epic name and inside of your Jira uh, boards, you will have the epic panel, right? And so epic is shown everywhere, even though it says feature for the issue type, and it just causes a lot of confusion. So part of what this change is going to be rolled out for is everywhere you where you used to see epic will now say whatever you rename it to so like feature right so this is going to be a really really cool and this experience is kind of already being rolled out i've seen it in a couple of different jira so it's really really cool but what's going to be new is this parent field right because now this is going to replace that epic link and parent link that i just talked about a few seconds ago and it's just simply going to be a parent so that's going to be really really cool now this is a beta program and there's they have a couple of websites here that you're going to want to check out I'll link the main article, but I recommend you go check out these other uh, articles here as well. And I want you to notice that this is a beta program, right? This is not something that is currently available to everybody. You have to opt in. Here's the link here. So how do I sign up? And these changes are going to be rolling out mid-October. As a Jira admin, we've all been there before. Our users go in and hit delete on an issue. And even though Jira tells them, hey, once you delete this, it's gone. It's gone forever and there is no undoing it. And yet they still click on that red button and that Jira issue is deleted. Only moments later to have a change of heart and then ask you as a Jira admin to, hey, can you restore that issue that I just deleted? So you know that that's really not possible, but let me introduce you to Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud, an app made by my good friends over at Rewind. Now you'll be able to restore deleted issues. So even though your users don't follow the warnings that Jira gives them, rest assured that using Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud, you'll be able to bring back those deleted issues. Use the link in the description down below to start a free trial. Now, before you get too excited and you jump on here and you go do this, I wanna caution you. I've been on this beta for many, many months now, and there's some bumps in the road that I want you to be aware of. Number one, please do not enable the beta in your production Jira. This at least now, hopefully it's a little bit more ironed out. But when I started this beta six, nine months ago, it was still very much a rocky experience. And we even lost our epics for like a good day. So if you're ever going to do any beta, any early access program from not only a lasting, but any vendor out there, always, always, always do it in a like a sandbox or a non-production environment. Because the last thing you want to do is introduce this level of risk of uncertainty and of instability into your day-to-day. -day. We're using this to run $100 million programs, right? You do not wanna do that because trust me, when you sign up for these betas, it's a beta, it's unstable. It's It could be changed at any moment, right? And when you're using Jira and you're relying on Jira to deliver these $100 million programs, $500 million programs, right? Or even just $20 a day programs, you don't want your Jira just kind of, you don't want to walk in the next day and go, oh, well, that's interesting. All my stuff's gone, right? You don't want that experience. So go set it up in a sandbox if you're going to do this, because as awesome as that last thing is, they aren't perfect. Software is hard. And I personally, I have scars from being a victim of things just disappearing on you in a production environment. So you do not want to do this in production, right? You want to, if you're going to want to do the beta, make sure you go over there. Now, the other thing that I'll tell you is that this is perfect for safe teams. So if, if you're a safe team, I would consider you to pursue this option. But if you're not safe, I would ignore this completely until it rolls out to production. Because adding complexities of being able to sandwich issue types between your epics and just adding even more hierarchies just adds more complexity. And I'm a big, huge proponent of the KISS principle. If you've seen my videos, you know that I love keeping things simple. I love just keeping it as simple as possible. And any time that you add hierarchies or rename things, right, you're adding complexity to your processes. It is not always a good thing. You want to keep your processes and your tools as simple as possible whenever possible because there is chaos in the madness of all these customizations. So if you're a safe team, because you're following a very rigorous process, a complex one at that, but a process that's already defined for you nonetheless, 
then I think I'm okay because you at least have something, some some foundation to to base your changes off of. So I want you to just basically take those two things away, which is don't do the beta in production, go do it in a sandbox. And two, only really consider this beta if you're a safe-ish team, because if you're not safe, then being able to sandwich things or rename things, again, just adds complexity that you don't really need. But other than that, I do recommend if, if you do have a sandbox and if you are a safe team, highly recommend you check this out because I've been using it for a while and it is a bit really, really big game changer. It fundamentally changes the way Jira works and it's going to be really, really uh, helpful for those teams that have just been struggling with Jira because this brings Jira now back up to par so that it's actually closer to like a true Agile tool, in my opinion, because I've always been a big fan of Azure DevOps Online because they do have those features, right? But now any team that wants to use those features are going to be able to create them in Jira. And I think it's just going to put Jira right back up at the top and regain that market share that we've been losing to Azure DevOps and other tools like version one and stuff like that. So I think there's a really, really good change that's supposed to come and that honestly, at last we should have had since like five years ago. But nonetheless, here it is. It's finally rolling out, at least in beta, mid-October. I'm excited. And I recommend, again, if you meet those two criteria, go test it out. This is going to be a really, really game-changing experience here. But if you're not, then I would sit tight until they roll this out to production. Is your company looking for a compliant backup solution for Jira Cloud? Then look no further than Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud, made by my good friends over at Rewind. Rewind is proudly... SOC2 compliant and data is encrypted in transit and at rest using TLS 1.2 and AES 256. Crush your security and compliance requirements and get started with a free trial of Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud. Use the link in the description down below. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash those like buttons. And if you made it this far in the video and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you smash the subscribe button there down below. And then finally, don't forget to check out the links down in the description below, as you will see links to my merch store, my paid courses, and of course, links to our sponsors that make these videos possible. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. So fight and fight.